game. And Wade goes to the free throw line. Scoring in the game for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Brookins has 18. Arnold has 12. Ronnie Lester has scored eight. Kevin Boyle has 10. Wade has six. And now seven. Grafsis in the center scored but two. Georgetown, the big point producer, Eric Floyd, sophomore guard, 27 points. Craig Shelton's at 14. Most of those crashed into the basket. John Duran, six. Mike Frazier off the bench to score nine. Dutch, two. Smith, two. Hancock, four. And it's 66 60, Georgetown. When you get this far, you're looking at basketball teams that won't break when the heat's on, and it is on in this game as Georgetown goes outside to Eric Floyd. Both clubs know how to play under pressure, Don, and it's going to be, I think it's going to be tight down the wire. Look out, lead pass, Kenny Arnold to Ronnie Lester. Lester fires. What do we have? We have a foul on Steve Waite. Iowa with a chance to come to within four. Waite thought he had got pushed first. If he did, it's always the second guy that gets called. Here comes the rebound. It really goes high. Waite comes into him right there. He gets called for the foul. So the pace slows for the moment with 8.50 left to go in the game. And Georgetown in the lead 66 to 60. On the playing floor for the Hoyas, Eric Floyd, John Dern in the backcourt, Shelton at the free throw line, Ed Spriggs, and Eric Smith. 78.6 free throw shooter on the line in Shelton. Gets a break, almost lost the missed free throw. Now the Hawkeyes come down, looking to come within four. Hawkeye backers start up. Hoyas in. Excuse me, Don. The Hoyas in that zone, and right now is where you have to have patience because Iowa each time down right now has got to have patience and get a good shot. Make sure they get a good basket each time. Freshman Bob Hanson in the game for Iowa, and he was fouled as the Hawkeyes. Looped it down low, and Georgetown quickly doubled up. There's Dave Gavish, the athletic director of Providence College, and the commissioner of the very successful new conference, the Eastern Eight. He's had a great first year. In fact, Georgetown was a co-regular season champion with St. John from Syracuse. And then Georgetown won the Eastern Eight tournament. Hanson on the free throw line. Not a good free throw. 53.9%. When you usually say that, what do they do? They hit it. <laughs> Bob Hanson, they some say he was best player in your native state last year, Iowa. Well, Iowa got two kids that were good. Uh, Mark Gannon is not playing because of an injury. Both of them have contributed much success to the Hawkeyes this season. Hey, hey, here we go now. 66 to 62. Hawkeyes chipping back. Down by 14. They've cut the lead to four with 817 left to play in this Eastern Regional Championship game. The Georgetown Hoyas, their 14-point lead down to four. And the Iowa Hawkeyes matching up man-to-man -man as Eric Smith goes baseline, but there's no shot with Waite coming over to help out. Duran goes to Big Ed Spriggs. They're drawing the big people away from the boards. Georgetown might go back door here in a minute. They're pulling everything away from the basket. John Duran heads in. Back outside, they go to set it up over. And again, Georgetown brings its people out. Don, you uh, hit it exactly right. Georgetown is going out in a delay game. They'll look for the back cuts right here. Hanson picks up a foul. They are, can play. They're an up-tempo team, but they can also shut it down and play the delay game. They've got extreme quickness. Some guys getting ready for tomorrow. 66-62. First personal foul on Bob Hanson. At the free throw line is Eric Floyd. 27-point score in this game. That's one thing. That may be a freshman mistake right there. You do not want Floyd on the line. 20, I think he had 27 points coming up till now, and he's shooting, shooting it with great rhythm. I think Mike Frazier comes in now for Georgetown. Floyd gets them both. Both teams in the bonus situation as we go down the last 42 play. 7.40 to go. Georgetown 68, Iowa 62. Winner goes down to Indianapolis next weekend to meet the winner of today's second game you'll also see on NBC, LSU and Louisville. They'll be playing for the Midwest Regional Championship at Houston. 
Eric Coy with a good feet, but that doesn't work in this game. Looks like a field in. goal. <laughs> they kicked it right off the floor. Big house here at the Spectrum. The Iowa Hawkeyes representing great basketball of the Big Ten and Georgetown, the class of the East this year. They certainly proved that. Didn't get no respect for a while, but they have it now. Here's Bob Hampton driving down the baseline of the floor. Blocking foul on Frazier. Coach John Thompson going to be heading for that milk bottle in a minute here. He's up and looking for it. The for the Iowa Hawkeyes coming back. Bob Hanson showing some courage right here. Makes the move on the baseline. Stayed away from the charging foul right there as he made his move, slanting back in to the middle of the court. Frazier fouled him. Hanson's on the line for two. No big problem. Just a freshman. A big deal. Bob Hansen drops it, gets ready for another try as Frazier goes out. Mike Frazier goes out and sends in a little more speed, a little less size than Jeff Fuller. Hansen, a freshman on that line, he, keep in mind he gained valuable experience during the season when Frazier was hurt. He started during that time, so he's been in the battle. Well, Kevin Boyle come back in for the Hawkeyes. Bob Hansen delivers, and it is a four-point game as Georgetown's lead is back now to 68-64. Hansen working hard against Duran. What do we have? We have an over and back, a violation against Georgetown. So the freshman Hansen matching up against the senior John Duran forces a turnover, and Iowa can come to within two. Hansen been involved with some critical plays right here. Look at him, pretty good position. Comes across, and now steps back over right there. Good call. Can delay with the ball coming over, and once you bring it, it can come after the body, but you can't get the body coming back. Wade puts it up at the two point game. Georgetown running down the floor, and John Thompson up walking in front of his bench, but does not signal for a timeout. Georgetown's lead of 14 has been cut to two. Eric Floyd stopped at the free throw line. He has been Georgetown's game. Eric Floyd with spectacular shooting has scored 31 points. And again, he gives Georgetown a cushion, slight as it may be, four points. Lester made a gamble, dive for the ball, didn't get it. Iowa was slow to recover on defense, did not pick up Lloyd quick enough, let him penetrate it into the free throw line. Johnny Lester goes out to Brookins, big keeper of Pat Neiman. <laughs> Brookins looks like he's hurt. A bad wheel right now, he's trying to walk it off. Vince Brookins has done such a great job shooting the ball for Iowa. They go to him. He goes up. He's still got his shot. John, you're never too hurt not to put the ball up. Everybody likes to shoot. Look at this. Ed Spriggs tried to slam dunk and lost the ball. It goes out of bounds. It goes the other way. It goes to Iowa. And the Hawkeyes can tie the game at 70 if they hit here. Boy, the momentum of this ball game has turned around. It's been a freshman. Bob Hansen, four free throws, forced a turnover. Watch Spriggs. This could have been a turnaround for Georgetown. If he slam dunks that, it brings the Georgetown crowd back in the ball game. And then he gets the foul on Lester going out of bounds, or the uh, foul up the plate out of bounds. No foul was called. This one has them standing and yelling here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. It's Georgetown rookie with Gary Thompson back at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. And we don't have a good one. We have a great one as Iowa has rallied back from 14 points down in this Eastern Regional Championship game. It's down by two with 5.59 to go. Well, they've really come on. Again, i got to give credit to that freshman, Bob Hansen, and also Steve Waite off the bench. We talked about inside play. He's gotten six points in this rally coming back. All of them have been inside, two putbacks, and one where he got a pass posted up deep. When Iowa fell behind after trailing at the half by 10, by 14 early in the second half, might be time to fold up your tent and steal back to Iowa City, but not the Hawkeyes. They came smoking back. They can tie the game here. And they've been through the wars last year. They tied for the Big Ten Championship. They know what it is to come back. Hampson, the freshman shoot. Oh, what a job under pressure this kid's doing. He might be a freshman, but he's no rookie. Bob Hampson playing the big game off the bench for Iowa has tied the basketball game at 70. Five and a half to go. Georgetown's 14-point lead is gone. It is tied. Let's see if Georgetown can maintain its composure now. Floyd shoots, too much there. Spriggs back up, rejected, but he fouled. Steve Waite fouled him, there's no question. A good foul, though, because Spriggs was going to put it right down. 
I was a little surprised. Here's the action. Lester gets beat right here as he penetrates in. They come off. Here comes Wade. Ball goes up. The big guy gets inside. Boyle cra or Wade comes back. A real hustle play. But foul Spriggs. He'll be on the line. I was surprised maybe that Iowa came up that tough. They had the ball game tied with Georgetown spread. They let him get the penetration. Ed Spriggs. Not your picture shooter, but he gets the job done with a little roll. The other philosophy might right be that you've come back from 14 down, you've got momentum going, you want to keep Georgetown playing, keep the pressure on. So Ed Spriggs, as Luke Lowson looks on, as his Hawkeyes come up the court, a 62% free throw shooter, Spriggs gets the vote, and Georgetown leads by two. And the game clock becoming a factor. Still a long way to go. And coming up next is LSU and Louisville for the Midwest Regional Championship. And you have to believe that either of the teams that come out of this game has a shot against the ranked power that comes out of that second game, LSU or Louisville and Indianapolis next week. They'll be meeting for the right to go to that Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern start time on NBC NCAA championship game. Well, very thing we're talking about, what Iowa had to do is get some inside play. They're now having some success as Georgetown is forcing the defense a little bit, not playing quite as soft, and Wade is getting it down inside. He's at the line again for two. Coach Thompson sent in new people in and out. Now he called Eric Floyd over to talk to him as Wade goes to the free throw line for Iowa. He's a 62% shooter, but when the pressure's on, everybody has been rising to the occasion for both these clubs that they have throughout the playoffs to advance their teams this far. It is tied now at 72. 72-72, and freshman Bob Hansen's coming right up and taking turn. Here's a steal by Boyle. He gets it back, and Boyle gives Iowa the lead. Boyle leads this club to a steal, and that's maybe one of the biggest he's made all year. The Hawkeyes of Iowa. What a tribute to coaching and to discipline and to self-confidence as they rally back from 14 points down, and they have taken the lead. Now Duran fires for Georgetown. He ties the game. What a clutch shot. Georgetown has kind of gone dead with their offense. Sometimes that's dangerous. We said that Georgetown can play the slowdown, but I was got back in it. A great clutch shot by Duran. Hoyas have gone to a shorter lineup. They have Jeff Bullock playing the middle of that zone defense. They don't have the real big guy in there right now. Hansen fires in the corner. Brookins takes a step. And Brookins drives down another line drive jump shot. He has 22 points, and Lute Olsen sees his Hawkeyes go up again by two. Duran to the basket. Duran again knocks it down to tie the game. What a basketball game. And the senior, Duran right there, taking charge. He's been out of the offense in flow right now. But you can see him. He'll like that kind of player. A guy that wants the basketball when things are going tough. Sensational game, and you see the game clock winding down. Three forty to play. Ronnie Lester for Iowa. Duran against him. Both teams in the bonus free throw shooting situation. So personal fouls are so vital now that the free throw line could very well decide this game as we come down the stretch. Hanson goes outside to Lester. Iowa coolly zipping the ball around the outside of the Georgetown zone. Coach Thompson up and moving around in front of the Georgetown bench. He can't stand it anymore. <laughs> He'll get the milk bottle. <laughs> Tied up at 76 in Iowa, playing a control game now, waiting for something to break. Georgetown coming out. Ball slipped away. Brookins picks it up, and Lester calmly looks up at the clock. Lou Dilson, the Iowa coach. Wade comes up with the ball, goes to Boyle, he heads to the hoop, and the Chicago sophomore gives Iowa the lead, Kevin Boyle. Hawkeyes are tough, 78-76. Durans come down the floor twice to rally Georgetown from behind. Oh, I see it with a two-point lead for Iowa, they back off now, and I think that's smart. No sense letting Georgetown come out with that speed and go back. Iowa goes back to zone. I think it's a good coaching move right here. Take some time off the clock. You're getting 219 to play. You see it there in your picture. John Duran, the senior guard. Yo-yo in the ball up and down outside the Iowa zone. Duran loops it down to Shelton. Here's the glass man. Comes to the basket, and Shelton gets it down for Georgetown, and he ties the game at 78. What clutch shooting. Both teams just matching each other. Basket for basket. Everyone a pressure shot. Certainly great. And Lou Olsen tells his Hawkeyes, let's talk it over. They call a timeout. 
155 left to play in the game, 78 to 78. The Eastern Regional Championship game is tied. Now we're going to go to New York and Bryant Kemble. Thank you, Bryant. We're just about set to go. The Georgetown Hoya cheerleaders on the floor. The Iowa Hawkeyes are out there, both with big, big rooting contingents. Georgetown not that far away in Washington, D.C. And a team that is comprised primarily of Washington players. For many years, Washington has been a preeminent spot developing high school talent, but a lot of them left and stocked other teams around the country. John Thompson from D.C. said, we know they're good ones right here. That's what we're after, and he's recruited 10 from D.C. on this team. Lute Olson, a good look at the Iowa coach right there. They're only about 200 and some miles from Chicago. They've recruited the Chicago area very heavily. Plus, they've supplemented with two fine Iowa players. Strategy, 155 to go. I think you may see Iowa come out, maybe hold for one shot. Go out into the late game on this end. They've got the ball game tied. They can go for one. Both teams in the one and one. Georgetown, if that's the case, would have to be careful on the five. That is the game clock winding down. And of course, the Midwest Regional Championship game is next. LSU and Louisville, two top five teams meeting at Houston. And the winner of this one will be playing the winner of that one. And this is just exactly what I was doing. They've got Arnold back in the ball game. He's a good ball handler and also a good free throw shooter. 133, you see the game clock winding down. That's the official time going down. Blue pass to Kenny Arnold, side court, back in the game. They go to their quarterback, Lester. If I'm Georgetown right now, I've got to protect with a man back beat deep, but I've also got to put some pressure on Lester, who's got that bad play. Oh, smart call by Boyle. Call a foul. Georgetown thought, I think they got a jump ball out of it. We'll have to see. We've got no signal yet. And John Thompson's certainly waiting to hear. They're giving, they're giving Iowa the timeout. The timeout, all right. Break of the action, 1.14 to go, and the game is tied. And we return now to our studios for this message. This is Don Cricky with Gary Thompson back at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Iowa has the trump card right now. They have the ball with this game tied 78-78. Louisville and LSU in the Midwest Regional Final is coming up next in NBC following this game. But we could conceivably, Gary, go to OT in this one. We certainly could. I think it's, it possibly could come down to that. This one has had him up and shouting. And Georgetown looked like they are going to put Iowa away early in the second half. Hoyas had a 10-point halftime lead, Bill at the 14. And you see the game clock wind down to 103. Lester, he handles the ball so surely for Iowa. The pressure on as he's done all season when the bad knee is permitted him in the lineup. Georgetown playing smart out there on the pressure. They'll double the ball because they're protecting the backside. Iowa, they know, is not going to go for that basket right now against that defense. They're getting the chance to get a steal out of the double team pressure. Do a lot of research to look at the bad free throw shooters. We've seen those 60% free throw shooters, though, hitting coolly in this game. Well, that's why they're not handling the ball, and that's why the freshman, even though he did a great job and hit the free throws, is not in there right now. It's too much to ask of a freshman they're going in for this the shot. situation. You're right, Gary. They're going to go for the shot. You will get penetration, I think, by one of the guards. Brookins will flare to a wing. They'll either take the penetration or pitch out to Brookins, who's had the great half. Iowa with 14, 13 seconds to play. 15 seconds on the stadium clock calls timeout. So the Iowa Hawkeyes rallying back from 14 points down. They take the lead twice. Georgetown came back to tie it twice. It's tied right now at 78. But Iowa has the last shot, or do they? Well, <laughs> we don't know. With 14 to sec seconds, anything can happen. I can remember seeing a ball game this year. Bradley at Texas A&M doing that one. And Bradley had the ball with nine seconds to go. The game tied. Texas A&M wins it in regulation time. Make a steal, go down, and lay it up, get fouled, hit two free throws. This game, you can never tell. There's never uh, not enough time to do something. That man's doing something right there, Lou Olson. He is coaching. And on the other end, George Thompson. He's chewing that towel. He's getting his club ready. Many more than just the players have broken a sweat over this one. 78 to 78, Iowa and Georgetown. Well, you've got to look at Iowa handling the ball. Lester, 78.7 from the free throw line. You've got Kenny Arnold, 74.8. So to see those kids handle it, I look for the penetration. 
Watch right now. Georgetown could go zone in this 14 seconds, too. That's a possibility. I look for him really to put the pressure on, though. What about fouling now? That can kill you at the end here. F oh, crucial. Now, yeah, let's see what happens. 14 seconds to play in the game. Maybe not in the game. At least in regular. They got an advantage. Royal looks to wait. Oh, what a move by Wake. And he was fouled. Steve Wake goes to the basket. The score goes. The Hawkeyes lead 80-78. And with five seconds to go, he'll go to the free throw line the big play. The Hoyas gambled outside on the pressure. The one kid slipped down and let Boyle get loose. It created a mismatch on defense and odd number. Iowa against the Georgetown kids. And here's the tail end of the play. Watch, wait. The pressure, the kid from Iowa City goes in, lays it up, gets followed by Shelton, and this will be the biggest free throw of the year for Wake. It could ice the ball game with five seconds. Of the year? I mean, it's got to be the biggest of his life. I don't know what else he's done to You've got to think that the Hoyas right now, their strategy, if they can get a miss and a rebound, they've got to call yeah, timeout. They should good. be alerting the free throws right now. And it looks like their kids are talking to the, to the officials to let them know, we're going to call timeout immediately so you can save a second or possibly two. Well, Coach team. Georgetown Hoyas can only hope now that big Steve Waite throws up a brick, and they want him to think about it a little bit more. They're freezing him right now. Gary Thompson, five seconds remain to be played in the Eastern Regional Championship game. Iowa has rallied back from 14 points down in the second half and leads by two, and this man, Steve Waite, will try to complete a three-point play. The thing, I don't know what the timeout situation is for Georgetown. They should have been in position. If they have two timeouts, it's really what they need if, for a chance. If Waite can miss, they need a timeout to kill the ball. They need the ball in, get it down court, call a timeout again. You probably still have three seconds. You'll have it in the offensive end. Three cents, three seconds gives you some time to make a move with the basketball. Big John's liable to set a record on that milk carton today. <laughs> Going through a few. Down now sends his five players out. They're telling Ed Sprague, you're not in the game anymore, big guy. That's right. They had six people on the court. That could have been disastrous. Mike Frazier alert. Got Spriggs out of there. <laughs> oh, Ed, you don't want to lose an extra man, a technical. Steve Wade has had a going through two timeouts, waiting to complete a three-point play. <laughs> Iowa could be headed to Indianapolis. Georgetown will try a court-length pass. Four seconds. Just they go to Frazier. He shoots. Doesn't go. It's tipped in by Bullis. Time has run out. Let's see now. Bullis tipped it in. Georgetown trails by one, 81 to 80, and it might be over. Georgetown called a timeout as soon as it went through, and they're going over to the official score. There's no time on the clock. I know one thing. I don't want to be making this decision. <laughs> Although it's pretty much a lock for Iowa. All I got to do is roll the ball down the court. That's right. If it's one second, you throw it long. And uh, regardless what, there's not much that's going to happen. So a Cinderella season of Georgetown is apparently over, depending on what Iowa does with the inbounds play. 15 consecutive victories for Georgetown. A 26-5 and record coming to this game. Just a super comeback by Iowa in this ball game. It looked like it might be a blowout at the start of the second half. Georgetown went up 46-32 right after the start of the half. But the Iowa Hawkeyes have battled back and it looks like they're going to the Final Four. We're told there is less than a second left. That's pretty good when you're going down to fractions of seconds on scoreboard clocks. Let me tell you what Georgetown is going to have to do right here with Iowa puts it in. They, night, they need to try to set up the type of a sucker play. That's their only chance where they can get an Iowa kid to release for the ball, set a defensive pick behind him, and pick up an offensive foul. That's the only shot they've got. Gary, as you assess the game, what was the determining factor if there was one that helped Iowa come from 14 points down to get back in the game and subsequently go into the lead? I think they showed great patience when they were 10 and 12 down against the zone and then getting the ball inside and getting to the offensive glass. Wait really started to charge the offense downs, that's it. Inbounds to Ronnie Lester, he touches the ball, and that final fraction of a second is officially concluded. 
winds out, and the Iowa Hawkeyes head to Market Square Arena, Indianapolis, Indiana. They go against the winner of today's second game on NBC, the LSU-Louisville matchup for the Midwest Regional Championship. And the greatest year in Georgetown basketball comes to a heartbreaking end at the hands of a Hawkeye team who, when the pressure was on, when a lot of teams would have folded and left, really got it together and rallied back to win the biggest Iowa basketball victory maybe ever. Well, I'm certain that Iowa's been there 55 and 56 again and 70 and 79 last year, but this had to be one of the most exciting wins they've had as they battled back. It's been comeback time all year. They've been strapped with injuries, and I know an assistant coach, Tony Andrew, McAndrews for Iowa, was at home. He was involved in a light plane crash about three weeks ago. He's recovering, and I'm certainly he's one of the happiest Hawks right now. Tony's probably jumping right out of the hospital <laughs> bed. Home bed. Good luck, Tony. You've been in Indianapolis. It is over. The Mid-East Regional, or the Eastern Regional Championship game is over. And coming up very shortly, the LSU-Louisville game. You'll see players like the great Rudy Macklin and Dwayne Scales of LSU. Against a player, a lot of scouts say, is the best complete player in the game. Backcourt star and consensus All-American Daryl Griffith of Louisville. So we have UCLA and Purdue heading to one bracket matchup next Saturday on NBC in Indianapolis. And then the Iowa Hawkeyes go against the winner of today's second game. Right now, our Gillette most valuable player of the game is... I would have to go with Steve Wade. Steve Wade of Iowa. For Gary Thompson, this is Don Crick reminding you that coming up next, the second half of our doubleheader, the Midwest Regional Finals between LSU and Louisville, followed by Sports World. Stay tuned. It's all right here on NBC, following these messages from your local station. A promotional fee has been paid to our double hit. Oh, the Iowa Hawkeyes with Coach Lou Olson. Listen to this crowd go crazy tonight, folks. 